For some farmers, Harvest 2019 is going surprisingly well. The largest draft horse show in Michigan is underway, and Michigan Agricultural Commodities' Chris Betts has your market report. I'm Janelle Bros, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. For one Michigan dairy farmer, 2019 harvest is turning out better than expected. In June, Brad Hart of Heartland Farms was staring down tough milk prices and weather that made planting almost impossible, leaving him fearing it might be time to sell their cows. Right now, the, the thing we're facing is the price of milk is not going to let us be able to buy feed. There's no margin there to do that. and. You know, you have to make a decision how far you're going to go in debt to keep milking cows on $16 milk. Fast forward to today and the sentiment at Hart's Clayton, Michigan farm, which covers 3,000 acres and includes a 900 cow dairy operation, is much more optimistic. We got back in the field on uh, June 27th and then the 28th, 29th, we had five days. We planted approximately 1,100 acres of corn those five days and it all came up perfect and it's turned out to be a fairly good crop. We ended up switching down to 85 day hybrids. I think it was 88 to 82. And to look at it right now, it looks like some of it would combine if we wanted to. It made it into full dent. Ground worked up fine. We planted right into moisture. Corn was mostly all up in five days, all even stand. We had perfect weed control. We used half the nitrogen that we normally use because it was so late in the season, we didn't think we were going to get the yield, so we cut that way back, and as it's turned out, maybe we don't need to use so much nitrogen anyway. Taking the pressure off of Heartland Farms this year, a decision by the USDA to move up the harvest date for grazing or chopping forages grown on prevent plant acres. Because prior to that, without being able to plant on PP, you've got to make a financial decision if you're going to take the PP, or you're just going to take the risk of getting six or seven ton of silage, and be further in the hole than we were going in. And the way the price of milk's been, it's been that would have been a very risky venture. If you want a car from a company that's been building them for 115 years, get a Ford. If you want a car with driver assist technology, get a Ford. You're gonna want a Ford. The 2019 Michigan Great Lakes International Draft Horse Show and Pull is now underway. In its 43rd year, the show is taking place at the MSU Livestock Pavilion in East Lansing from now through Sunday, October 20th. What makes this event unique is that it is the only one in the world to feature halter classes, hitching, plowing, pulling, and riding for draft horse breeds and mules at the same time and location. This is the largest uh, horse show in the state of Michigan. It's the third largest uh, draft horse show in the United States and in, in, in Canada. We um, specialize in an, a few different things. We have plowing, we have obstacle courses, we have hauler classes uh, checking confirmation on horses, we have hitch horses uh, galore uh, from carts to eight horse hitches. And so it's a very, it completely uh, explains the heavy horse industry if you'll come by and take a look. It's, it's really something. Young people just love it. We, Sunday we have a complete youth day where it's all uh, young people from the ages of 10 right through 18 competing against other young people. It's very, very interesting and it's very competitive and I think that families would love seeing all of it. Saturday night we have a huge eight horse hitch show this year we've got 15 eight horse hitches in uh, to compete and so it's going to be monumental really. Tickets for the show are $12 each and children seven years old and younger are free. You can view the results of the draft horse show and pull online at mgli.org after the show wraps on Sunday. The USDA this week declared the United States free of plum pox virus. Plum pox is considered one of the most serious diseases affecting stone fruits. The disease doesn't kill infected trees, but instead causes severe yield losses, making it tough to market infected fruit. Plum pox was first detected in Pennsylvania in 1999 and made its way to Michigan in 2006. The USDA is finally deregulating the latest known plum pox virus positive area in the U.S. after three years worth of surveys conducted on stone fruit trees in eastern New York came back clean for the virus. 
Harvest season is a prime time for accidents. Educate your operators before they hit the road. Check out available resources at fosterswift.com forward slash ag transportation. The deadline to apply for the 2020 Michigan Apple Queen title is October 31st. Women ages 17 to 23 with a strong connection to and knowledge of the apple industry are encouraged to apply. The Michigan Apple Queen will represent the state's apple industry for one year. Call the committee's office or visit their website for an application. And now with a look at the latest market activity, here is Michigan Ag Commodities' Chris Betts. Thanks, Janelle. Corn and beans have been supported by excessive moisture in much of the Midwest and the Northern Corn Belt, which will not benefit a late harvest. Support has also come from dry conditions in Brazil, which have delayed planting significantly there. Both corn and beans have notched multi-month highs, but have found technical resistance there. The latest round of trade negotiations between the U.S. and China seem to have led to a mini-deal that will include further Chinese purchases of U.S. ag products. Both sides have indicated that the deal was agreed upon in principle, but nothing official has been released, and the Chinese have said further talks are needed before the agreement, or phase one of a bigger deal, can be implemented. Still, it seems a positive step has been taken towards a resolution, which the market has responded towards positively. For more market information, go to michag.com. With Michigan Agricultural Commodities, I'm Chris Betts. For more news and video, visit michiganfarmnews.com and the Michigan Farm Bureau channel on YouTube. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Bros. Have a great week of farming.